lesson on waves. We're going to look at just the, some basics about waves. And first of all, a wave, waves are, they propagate, they move energy through an empty space or through a medium. And we're going to look at different types of waves. Um, first of all is the mechanical wave. Waves that are mechanical require medium. If you take a look, if you took away these particles, medium, medium first of all, is just nothing more than just particles, matter atoms of some sort. Um, notice how these particles bounce off of each other. And when they bounce off of each other, they return to their original position. It was all started from some sort of disturbance. So you see this little piece right here, knocking that first particle, bouncing off of each other. And the energy is what's actually moving. And so we're going to look at two types of waves. We're going to look at longitudinal and, and uh, transverse waves a little bit later. This itself is a longitudinal wave, and you'll know why. So the key here, waves move energy. They do not move without matter. And especially if it's a mechanical wave. If it's an electromagnetic wave, they're going to still transfer energy, but they're not going to need matter. Waves move in simple harmonic motion, and so uh, what simple harmonic motion is when it's just a back and forth motion around an equilibrium position, as you see here. And here would be a full wave, up, down, and back up. Now the difference between mechanical and electromagnetic wave is electromagnetic magnetic waves, they're going to start with a vibration of some sort, some sort of disturbance, but in this case, it's going to be a charged particle. It could be electron shifting energy levels going, you know, going to a lower energy level, giving off a little energy, um, but they don't need medium. And so this is going to be a key here because they don't require particles. Like take a look right here. Particles are bouncing off of each other, whereas electromagnetic waves, I just kind of showed you the waves. We'll, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but I just showed you the wave and the energy moving, but they're not going to need these little particles back, bouncing back and forth. And so the electromagnetic wave, the reason why it's called an electromagnetic wave, is it is actually a magnetic field, an electrical field. And if you take a look at how the, the vibrations occur, they're going, the magnetic field's going back and forth, and the electric field is at 90, a 90 degree angle to the, um, to the magnetic field, also going back and forth. And we're going to talk about this. This is going to be a, considered a double transverse wave because you have a transverse wave is going to look like this. Well, you have that, but you also have the one going to the side. Now, when it comes to electromagnetic waves, and we're going to talk about light a little bit later, um, but when it comes to electromagnetic waves, they don't need a medium. So this is key in your thinking through the process of how fast they move. And when you think about an electromagnet wave, for example, one might be um, light from the sun. So we're on Earth. We have... You know, Earth over here, well, light is going to come through space, and we have a vacuum in space or no medium. And light can still travel through that no medium because it doesn't, it, it, you know, it doesn't need medium to bounce off of itself. So it's going to come through, <clears throat> it's going to enter our atmosphere. When it enters our atmosphere, it's going to start going through gas. When it starts going through gas, it's going to slow down. And this is kind of the, the thought process be behind um, how fast an electromagnetic waves wave moves. Since it doesn't need a medium, it travels the fastest in a vacuum or in space. It's going to travel slower in gas. And if it goes into water, it would travel a little bit slower. And if it happened to go into, let's say, a uh, translucent um, ice, it would travel even slower. And so the actual medium kind of gets in the way of, of the speed of, of the electromagnetic wave. When you hear the term wave propagation, it's just um, how waves are being sent. If you have a single wave, and actually I just drew the top of the wave. Full wave is really a top and a bottom. But a wave pulse is just a single wave traveling. Whereas a wave train, if I took over here and I was just vibrating a string up and down, uh, the end result would be a wave train, would be, which would be a continuous wave. So let's answer these questions. Take a second and answer the questions. What do all waves transfer? What do waves not transfer? What is the, what is the do? What do magnetic waves require? I'm gonna cross out that. What do magnetic waves require to, that electromagnetic waves, waves do not? What is the difference between a wave train and a wave pulse? And so once you answer those questions, 
Now I quickly showed you the answers before, but these are the answers you should have. And so all what do waves transfer? They transfer energy. What do they not transfer? They don't transfer the medium. Uh, what do mechanical waves require that electromagnetic waves do not? And that's going to be a medium. Uh, electromagnetic waves can uh, can travel through space, which mechanical waves won't be able to because they do need those particles. And what's the difference between a wave train and wave pulse? Well, a pulse is a single vibration. Wave, wave train is continuous. Okay, so let's look closer at mecha mechanical waves. We're going to look at two types, and these are transverse and longitudinal waves. Once again, we're going to look at mechanical waves, so these are ones that are going to require a medium. Now, because they require a medium, they actually work differently. Um, a mechanical wave will not travel through space. And you'll hear a common one that we'll talk about is sound. Sound, if you were in, in space, once again, you'd have a spacesuit. So you'd have air in that spacesuit. But um, if for some reason you yelled, it would not go from your spacesuit to someone else's spacesuit because in between your spacesuits um, is going to be, so there's one person, there's another person. We're in space, um, in between the spacesuits. So you might have air particles in here and in here. But there's not going to be particles in between. So a mechanical wave would never, like sound, would never travel from here to there. Um, you could shine a flashlight, which would be an electromagnetic wave, and that would be that, that could be seen by somebody else. And because of that, they often will have other things, you know, radios that they that will send a radio wave. It's different than a sound wave. We'll talk more about that later too. But we go from a vacuum where there's no motion to gas, where it actually starts. It's more. We'll, we'll talk about gas being more elastic. Elastic is gonna. It's gonna start getting. Um, or sorry, that's going to be the least elastic, which which has to do with like tension. Um, you know, gas is going to be very moldable, whereas liquid is moldable as well, but not as, as moldable as gas, bit of filling in a, a an area, and then solid, which is going to be you know more rigid. And so we go from elastic to the least elastic to most elastic. And with mechanical waves, they're going to travel the fastest in a solid because these particles can bounce off of each other really quickly. Um, so travel faster when they can bounce off of each. These ones are a little bit further away, so they, they take a little bit more to bounce off of each other. These ones will take even more to bounce off of each other. And these ones don't have any particles, so mechanical waves could not travel through a vacuum. So slowest in a vacuum, which would be none. We probably won't even leave that, leave that, leave that off. Slowest in gas and fastest in the solid for a mechanical wave. So transverse waves, transverse waves, when we draw transverse waves, we're going to draw up and down. And so I just showed you how this was working here. Notice how the energy is moving. The particles return to where they started, but you can follow the energy. So follow the energy moving through, whereas the particles stay in their same spot. But the this is something you should know. The actual motion or the, 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 the medium vibrates perpendicular to the actual motion of the energy. So this energy is coming through, and the vibrations are up and down, like that, up and down, as the wave is going that way. So perpendicular to the perpendicular to the vibrations, perpendicular to motion. And some other information, just the, the the terminology for transverse waves. We have an equilibrium position down the center. Um, the amplitude is from the equilibrium position to either the crest, which is the top of the wave, or the trough, with it, which is the bottom of the wave. So this is a full wave, and we're going to use a symbol wavelength. It's an upside-down Y-looking symbol. And so a wave, full wavelength would go from where it goes up, down, and back up, and that completes one full wave. Longitudinal waves. Longitudinal waves are going to bounce. Notice how the medium goes forward and then back. And so the, the vibration is parallel, back and forth, while the motion of the energy, the energy actually travels forward. And so we'll call that parallel to the vibration, but the vibration is parallel to the motion of the energy of the wave. Or just, just plain out, we'll say parallel to the wave. So it's back and forth in the same, same plane. Um, the parts of a longitudinal wave, we have a wavelength, which is gonna be in between these things called compressions. And so compressions are gonna be areas of more density. And then we're going to have refractions, which are areas which don't have much density or less density. And so that's the main terminology that you need to know about naming um, the longitudinal wave parts. Whereas the, the over here, when you have the transverse wave parts, you have a few more things that you have to kind of label. 
Sound is one of the most common longitudinal waves, and I just drew it this way. If you take a look, these little lines are going to be the compressions, and the spaces in between are going to be the refractions. And we'll spend a little bit more time with, with sound in a different lesson. So what kind of wave moves perpendicular to the direction of travel? Go ahead and answer these questions. Go ahead, perpendicular. What kind of wave moves parallel to the direction of travel? Answer that question. Go ahead and fill out the parts of a transverse wave. Fill out the parts of a longitudinal wave. And then tell me, what kind of wave is sound? And there's actually two terms. So is it mechanical or electromagnetic? And is it longitudinal or transverse? OK, and so here are the answers. Compare and contrast the speed of an electromagnetic wave and a, and a mechanical wave. So think about which one needs particles, and that's the one that's going to travel the fastest where you're the most rigid or more, more elastic, and which one doesn't need particles, and that's the one you're going to travel the fastest where you don't have any particles. So electromagnetic wave, the least elastic, most elastic, uh, the speed's going to be faster, um, it's going to travel fastest in a vacuum, and it's going to slow down as you get more and more solid, closer to solid, or more elastic. A mechanical wave, you're going to start fastest. Um, actually, you're going to start the slowest. You're not going to move at all in a vacuum, and you're going to start speeding up when you get into a gas, even faster in a liquid, and the fastest you're going to be in a solid because that's going to have the most particles close by, and therefore more particles that can bounce off of each other.